right. Hello and welcome to the second lecture. Please join me at the Blackboard. Uh, I'd like to tell you in this uh, in this portion about uh, some linear algebra that we'll need for uh, defining spinners uh, that we'll use uh, in the proof of the positive mass theorem uh, due to Witten. Okay, so first, uh, so there's going to be two stories, one to tell about R3 and then one to tell about uh, <clears throat> uh, Minkowski space. Okay, so it's a very classical story. Uh, maybe you've heard it before. Uh, okay, so first, uh, let's consider uh, S3. <clears throat> now, this lives inside of the quaternions as uh, you know, the quaternions of length one. Okay, so uh, think of an element here. This acts on the quaternions by conjugation. So some element, some quaternion x will get sent to lambda x, lambda inverse, inverse as a quaternion. <clears throat> uh, okay, so let's get a picture for what this action is. Uh, Okay, so let's describe uh, this action. Uh, so lambda x by, let's draw a picture. Okay, so here let's draw zero, uh, the quaternion zero. Here let's draw the quaternion one. And let's suppose that lambda is not either plus or minus one. Okay, so let's draw lambda here. Some unit quaternion. Okay, there's a plan, a plane <laughs> spanned by lambda and one, uh, which forms a copy of uh, complex numbers. I'll call it uh, C lambda, sitting inside of, of H. <clears throat> Orthogonal to that uh, is another plane. Uh, intersecting only in one place, because four real dimensions here, uh, uh, which you could call another copy of the complex numbers uh, generated by lambda times the quaternion J. Now, how does lambda uh, act? How does this conjugation uh, act here? Well, uh, it's the identity. So it fixes this uh, blue plane, C lambda. Uh, and it is a rotation in the direction from lambda j to lambda k, quaternion k, uh, by an angle twice the angle between 1 and lambda. Uh, so it's a rotation by two theta uh, in the C lambda J plane. Two theta. Okay, let's notice a few things. Uh, so notice uh, the real numbers inside of H, they're fixed by uh, this action. And the, the action is norm preserving. OK, so we could really just consider this as an action on uh, the imaginary part of H. So this is an action on the imaginary part of H, those spanned by i, j, and k, um, which is a copy of R3. So we have a linear action on R3 the preserves norm. OK, so this defines, so it defines a map from S3 to SO3. And it is a two to one map. Notice, uh, for, in for instance, uh, uh, if you just look at this formula here, um, both lambda equals plus one and lambda equals minus one, they get sent to uh, the identity. The, the, the map on imaginary quaternions, which does nothing. So this is two to one. It's a two to one covering map. Uh, in fact, this is the same as the double cover of RP3. Uh, you might remember that uh, RP3, uh, you know, SO3 is uh, diffeomorphic to RP3. To see that, uh, remember that uh, SO3, that's a rotation of R3, that's defined by a vector v in S2 and a number uh, theta in, say, 0 to pi 
uh, representing the amount that you are rotating uh, along, you know, about the axis uh, given by the span of V in R3. Okay, so you could map this uh, the line span by V, so span of V and this rotation angle theta. Uh, you could consider that uh, as an element of the three-dimensional ball of radius pi. Uh, where the map from SO3 to this ball uh, of radius pi, uh, you will map to uh, V, the element of S2 that defines the axis that you're rotating around, the element of SO3 rotates around, so uh, V. And then uh, you'll go out theta in the V direction. So this will be uh, the point V theta uh, inside of the ball of radius pi. <clears throat> Uh, but then notice that uh, rotating by pi about the axis given by v, uh, this is the same as same rotation as uh, rotating by pi in the direction along the axis minus minus v. So uh, this gives you a map from S O three to the ball three dimensional ball of radius pi. Uh, but where you identify vectors uh, on the boundary by the antipodal map. So mm, you call y is equal to minus y for y in the boundary of S2, S2, or boundary of B3, S2, uh, which is a model for RP3. Okay, so this is uh, this two to one covering map and this group <coughs> S3. Uh, this is spin three. This is what we'll call spin three. In general, the spin groups are double covers of uh, SON, higher dimensions N, and it has a geometric model. Uh, the way we defined it so far, uh, this could be identified with SP1, the maps of the quaternions which preserve the norm. That's how we viewed it over here. <clears throat> uh, also, one more thing to note before we move on, <clears throat> which will be useful. Uh, this group is also isomorphic to SU2. So S3 as a group uh, is isomorphic to SU2. How does one see this? Well, uh, S3, you can consider that as uh, sitting inside of C2, as the unit sphere in C2. Uh, and you take a pair of complex numbers, A and B, inside of C2, and you send it to the following two by two complex matrix, uh, A minus B bar, B bar, uh, A bar. Oh, sorry, not just, just B by itself there. Okay, and this defines a isomorphism of these two groups. Good, so that is the, uh, uh, what I want to say about this. So S3, you can view it as it's this group spin three, uh, also known as SP1, also known as SU2, and it covers uh, SO3 with a two to one map. Okay, now let's move on to the second part of uh, this first story. Um, Minkowski space, there's a similar story, a uh, similar double covering of a certain group uh, which gives us the group spin three one. <clears throat> okay, so first of all, let's consider SO three one, and I'll put a little plus. So these will be the linear transformations from Minkowski space R three one to itself uh, that preserve the inner product, Minkowski inner product. Uh, they preserve the orientation and they preserve the time direction. You know, a, a linear transformation could take uh, the dt or e0 pointing in the positive t direction uh, to, the, to the minus t direction, in which case we would say that it reverses time. Uh, in general, if you just look at uh, O31, uh, the linear transformations of Minkowski space that preserve the norm, uh, yeah, preserve the norm. Uh, this will um, have four disconnected components. 
you can either preserve orientation, reverse it, preserve time, reverse it. Uh, and this quarter of it uh, will be the, the only one that is a group on its own. Sometimes you leave uh, the plus out of it for that reason. Okay, good. <clears throat> okay, so this acts on uh, Minkowski space. Now, <clears throat> I would like to explain how that, so this is, uh, has a double cover, a universal cover, uh, SL, well, let's call it spin three, one first, uh, covering SO plus three, one. And it turns out uh, the model for this that we would like to use uh, is uh, SL2C, SL2C, which are matrices, you know, two by two complex matrices uh, with unit determined. <clears throat> okay, how does SL2C act on uh, Minkowski space? If I need, want to define this map, I need to say, okay, given some matrix A, how does that uh, give me uh, something that acts on Minkowski space? Okay, so to describe that action, and so to define this map, uh, we'll, we'll embed, sorry, there's an embedding <clears throat> um, of Minkowski space uh, into two by two matrices. And to describe that, I'll say what it does on the basis E0, E1, E2, E3, where E0 is time-like representing DT and E123 are spanning the T equals zero slice of Minkowski. Okay, so uh, E0 will get sent to the identity matrix. Uh, E1 will get sent to zero, one, one, zero. E Two will get sent to zero minus i i zero, and e three will get sent to <clears throat> one zero zero minus one. These are sometimes called the Pauli matrices. It's a way uh, of representing a vector with a two by two complex matrix. Okay, so let's call this embedding something. Uh, how about phi? <clears throat> uh, and one thing to note that we'll need in a second, uh, that, uh, so if you take a vector V in Minkowski space, then its length using Minkowski norm, you know, three, one, uh, is equal to uh, the determinant of the resulting matrix that you get by uh, this embedding. So phi of V. That's worth checking on your own. <clears throat> okay, so now how does, uh, so how do we describe this map from SL to C to SO plus three, one. So matrix A here, uh, X on some V in R31, Minkowski space, via, so V will get sent to uh, A, V, a conjugate transpose. So you act on the left by the matrix and act on the right by, or you know, this is this is the embedding of it. And then I guess if you want, you, you could go back, but that, that's uh, maybe needlessly confusing. So just when I'm writing V here, I'm interpreting it as uh, the image under this embedding into two by two matrices. Okay, and this is the action. Okay, again, it's going to be a two to one map. So this, this here describes the element of SO plus three, one. Notice the determinant of this thing will be one. And so, or <laughs> the determinant of this thing will be uh, whatever the determinant of V is. And so this will be norm preserving uh, map. Uh, so SL2C, this acts on uh, matrices. We've used that fact that it, it's acting on matrices just by matrix multiplication. Uh, and it also acts, uh, but it acts on a smaller space. There's a smaller representation. Uh, namely, it acts on C2. So this acts on C2 
Uh, and it's kind of fundamental representation. Uh, let's call this representation V. So capital V stands for you know, C2 along with how SL2C acts on it. Okay, so the, the fundamental representation that we will want to be considering is the following. So let's set, we'll use this later, uh, S to B, uh, take this representation, uh, let's conjugate, and then add to that uh, the dual representation where you are considering uh, C2 as maps from C2, linear maps from C2 into C. So you dualize the representation that way. Or it's you know a form of right multiplication instead of left multiplication. Uh, okay, good. Uh, so this is a slightly larger representation. Uh, it is uh, four-dimensional, uh, and it will sit inside of uh, two by two complex matrices. Uh, and so uh, these things will act on it. Vectors will act on elements of this space by uh, left multiplication. <clears throat> So uh, I'll just say, okay, um, this is called Clifford multiplication. So elements of the vector space uh, R31 uh, act on elements of this representation. Okay, good. The objects in this group, uh, this vector space, uh, will be considered, uh, these will turn into spinners. Okay, so let's describe that next. Okay, so everything we've done so far, you know, views, seeing these two double covers, spin three as SU2 and uh, spin three one as SL2C, <clears throat> double covering uh, linear norm preserving transformations of Minkowski space. Uh, that, that's kind of like a, the point wise. Uh, uh, theory that we would like to now uh, soup up to applying to the manifolds in question. So some Ramanian, you know, space-like slice of the Lorentzian manifold uh, N. <clears throat> okay, so we have uh, M here, then we have N, larger manifold. Uh, now we have uh, vectors on N tangent bundle to n, uh, and then we can consider uh, the bundle tn restricted to m. So just consider uh, vectors on n, so they can have time components and uh, space components. You know, they can be uh, orthogonal and per, uh, parts that are tangential to m, um, but they only live over m. Okay, so this is a vector bundle over M. And um, so for, if everything's orientable and we have uh, these uh, Ramanian and Lorentzian metrics, uh, this bundle so has a structure group uh, S O plus three one upon choosing a, a, a normal as well. <clears throat> Uh, okay, so let me explain what I mean by this, if you haven't heard this terminology before. Um, <clears throat> uh, what does it mean to be a vector bundle? Well, that means the following. Uh, so let's draw a little toy picture here. Here we have M. Up here, we'll draw the tangent bundle of N restricted on M. And to be a vector bundle means that near every point in M, uh, there is a neighborhood, say U, so that you can identify, so let's call this bundle map pi, so that you can identify uh, pi inverse of U, let me write it over here maybe, pi inverse of U with U with the trivial bundle, U times R31, Minkowski space. And these are both uh, have projections onto u, one by pi, one by just projection onto the first component. Uh, and part of the data of a vector bundle is a way of 
you know, a, a fiber-wise linear uh, map uh, so that this diagram commutes. You can trivialize the bundle over uh, these, uh, these uh, open sets. Okay, so if we have two such open sets, U and V, so then they, you know, they overlap and the, you have a point in the middle of them, say X. And now <clears throat> the fiber over X has two ways to be identified with uh, R31. Uh, so you have a, a, a phi coming from U and you have a phi coming from V. And uh, phi, and so you can compose them or compose the inverse of one with the other one, uh, V at the point X. When I say the bundle has structural group SO, structure group SO plus three one, uh, this is a map from R31 to itself, the fiber over X being identified with R31. Uh, <clears throat> this gives you an automorphism of R31 and saying it has this structure group is saying that this can be identified or this is an element of SO plus three one. Okay, so the composition of uh, transition maps on overlapping trivializing neighborhoods can be identified with elements of this group. Okay. <clears throat> so that's that notion. Now, uh, let's go here, I guess. Uh, what we want is a, well, the following notion. So we say M is spinnable or spin if uh, we can find a, a, a way of lifting uh, these elements of SO plus three one. So these you know, transition maps, phi u inverse composed with phi v, they're in SO plus three one. And uh, we want to find a, so ab above this element in SO plus three one, there are two elements in uh, SL2c. There's double cover, there's two elements of here. So I can make one of two choices for a lift, at least on the intersection of u and v. So uh, we say it's uh, spinnable if, there is a coherent, so if there is a coherent uh, choice of lifting uh, of all of these transition maps to SL2C. So then I, when I go around and try to choose a lift of each of these elements of SO uh, plus three one uh, that I get from each pair of intersections, uh, I'm making uh, possibly three different choices uh, on the intersection, depending on which of these three that you uh, consider uh, something in the triple intersection to be in. And the, for the choice to be coherent, I want all of those three choices to agree. So you have three different transition maps, one from transitioning from here to there, you have one transitioning from here to here, and you have one uh, transitioning from here to there. Uh, and on the triple intersection, I want the lifts of all of those uh, to agree. Okay, now this isn't always possible. <clears throat> uh, but for an oriented three manifold, it is always possible, which is the situation we're in. Uh, so uh, this lift is always possible for uh, an oriented uh, three manifold, like we're considering. Uh, in general, 
uh, there's an obstruction. Uh, it just so happens, it's not obvious that it's the case, but uh, it just so happens that that obstruction vanishes for an oriented three manifold. In dimension four, uh, there, there is an obstruction, the second Stiefel Whitney class of the manifold, uh, but we don't need to go there. Oh, and by the way, uh, there are multiple choices of lifts, and uh, the possible choices uh, up to some isomorphism, you know, up, up to conjugating uh, by a single element, you know, of SL2C uh, are parameterized by <clears throat> uh, the first cohomology of your manifold with Z mod two coefficients. So if you have a, a lifting, then uh, the choices of different lifting up to you know some isomorphism that I haven't explicitly described, uh, they're given by elements of here. So in particular, if this group vanishes, this cohomology group vanishes for your manifold, then uh, there will only be uh, one choice if it exists. So for instance, uh, R3, R3, or R3 minus a ball has only one spin structure. because it's uh, first cohomology vanishes, simply connected. Okay, so now we do the following. <clears throat> okay, so change, so okay, now we're, now we're working up to defining uh, the spinner bundle that we'll be interested in. Um, <clears throat> so change of basis, of uh, basis, uh, matrices uh, give you an action of SO31 on the collection of frames on this bundle, TN restricted to M. Okay, so elements of SO31, they, they act on this uh, frame bundle by uh, multiplication. They're kind of like a change of basis. Uh, okay, you know, left multiplication. <clears throat> okay, so what we just said here, uh, lifting these transition maps to SL2C, uh, that provides for you a way of SL2C to act on frames of your uh, bundle. So, uh, right, so we can form, so, uh, so the spin structure gives you for SL2C to act on this frame bundle. I'll just call it F of TN restricted to M. I'm not spelling that out in the greatest detail, but we can't spend forever on this. I, <clears throat> so this allows you to form the following bundle. So conform, this is why we need this, uh, why I spent all this time talking about a uh, lift of the transition maps to SL2C. So this allows us to form the bundle, I'll call it bold S. Uh, we'll take frames on T n restricted to M, the bundle of uh, vectors on N over M <clears throat> uh, mixed with that representation S over SL2C. What do I mean by this? Well, it's a bundle over uh, M. <clears throat> and what is it? Uh, the fibers, well, I mean, it's described in the following way. Uh, it's like frames of this bundle product with the vector space S. Uh, and SL2C acts on both of these two things. So you mod out by the diagonal action of SL2C. Uh, when you do this, the fibers can all be identified with S. Okay, so this is 
what this not notation means here. Uh, and this is how you get this vector bundle. Uh, complex vector bundle S. Okay, these are called, uh, so sections of bold S, there's a, you know, sections of this bundle. I'll denote the collection of sections by gamma of bold S. Um, these are called <coughs> uh, Dirac spinners. As opposed to, there are other types of spinners. You know, if you uh, choose a different representation, Instead of you replace S with some other representation of SL2C, you get some other bundle, you get some other notion of spinners. Uh, by the way, just to, so, you know, all of our favorite bundles, they come from, you can interpret them as some construction like this. And you can do this similar construction uh, with, say, lambda 2, our second exterior power of uh, Rn. And SON acts on both of these objects transforms vectors, changes basis uh, on frames, and it also acts on Rn, so it acts on lambda 2 Rn. And this is nothing but the uh, second exterior power of uh, the tangent bundle. <clears throat> that 2 is not important, obviously. OK. So it's a similar construction, except we're, you know, you're, you're probably much more used to representations of SON on uh, exterior uh, algebra than you are uh, this representation, uh, but it's the same type of uh, bundle. <clears throat> okay, so this bundle has the following structure. It has a lot of structure at this point. So first of all, I didn't really mention this, but it has a Hermitian inner product. Uh, inner product. I'll use rounded brackets for that. Uh, and two, uh, some element of the tangent bundle of N restricted to M, uh, that still acts on uh, sections of <coughs> S, the Dirac spinner, uh, because elements of the Minkowski space acted on the capital S from before. Uh, this is Clifford multiplication. So you call this Clifford multiplication, as before. <clears throat> uh, and it works well with the, this uh, inner product that you can define. Uh, so if you take the inner product of V acting on some spinner uh, psi paired with the, some spinner phi, this is the same as uh, psi V acting on phi. So you, the, the Clifford multiplication is respected by this uh, inner product. This, this inner product uh, you can make, uh, is, is the, the existence is not uh, such a big deal. Uh, but also, um, so this is one property, I call it I and two, or two I's. <clears throat> uh, vectors act uh, in the following way. So that if you act by some vector V and then some vector W, that uh, differs from a negative W acting after V acts by uh, negative two, the inner product of V and W times the identity, <clears throat> where this is the inner product, Minkowski inner product H. So, uh, so you can translate between uh, consecutive actions by V and W uh, using this formula. This kind of defines the, there's an underlying algebra here I didn't tell you about, and uh, this relation defines that algebra. Okay, in terms of calculus, because we're eventually gearing up to do calculus on these manifolds, uh, <clears throat> you get a connection. So S gets a connection from the Levasivita connection on an H. And in fact, any, any bundle that you get from this sort of mixing um, by representation of the structure group of the, your tangent bundle or underlying bundle, um, you, you inherit a connection from it. OK, <clears throat> so the tangent bundle of M or N restricted to M has a connection from the lovely C connection of H. And uh, so this allows you to define, so for 
a vector field x and t m, not the larger bundle, but the smaller one. You want to know what it means to differentiate in a direction tangent to m. Uh, Nabla bar x gives you a way of mapping from sections of the spinner bundle uh, to itself. Okay, you inherit a connection from uh, n in this way. <clears throat> uh, okay. Uh, four. Uh, from this, you can form the following Dirac operator. So you get a Dirac operator. Given by the following formula, which I'll write over here because it's important. <clears throat> uh, let's call it slash partial with a bar over it. An X on a spinner phi in the following way. Take the metric on M, G, I, J. I'll define it in a basis. That's Clifford multiplication by E, I, Nabla, E, J, acting on phi. <clears throat> OK, so this is in a basis, E, I, four, T, M. Oh, and there's the bar there. OK, this is the fundamental operator that we'll be using. It's kind of like a, you can compare to a, a D and delta acting on uh, forms on your manifold. It's a very similar uh, type of object in that it's a first order differential operator. Uh, you know, there's some like uh, kind of confusing grading on <laughs> forms that uh, you don't see with spinners, uh, but it's a similar type of object. And, you know, the, 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 you know, these two operators have a lot to do with the topology of the underlying manifold and uh, what kind of curvature it can support. And uh, the same will be true of this Dirac operator. Okay, so we'll investigate that and uh, give a proof of the positive mass theorem in the next lecture. Thank you very much for your attention. I'll see you there.